Telescopes have opened our eyes to the universe. The telescopes commissioned in and around the world are providing evidence of billions of galaxies, each containing billions of stars like our sun and space phenomena that tell us about our evolution. India is also leaving no stone unturned to identify transient or variable objects in the overhead sky. For this, a first of its kind liquid mirror telescope has been commissioned at Devasthan at an altitude of 2450 meters in the Himalayas. Established at the Devasthal Observatory campus of Aryabhat Research Institute of Observational Sciences, ARES, the telescope is built by astronomers from India, Belgium and Canada. The novel instrument employs a 4-meter diameter rotating mirror made up of a thin film of liquid mercury to collect and focus light. To know more about India's first and Asia's last largest telescope, the PBNS team reached out to the director of ARES, Professor Debankar Banerjee, who is a physical metallurgist and materials engineer and a former chief controller of R&D at the Defence Research and Development Organisation, DRDO. Let me first of all uh, thank you uh, again for this uh, opportunity to uh, you know, express uh, this new uh, telescope which has been, uh, which is under commissioning phase in Devastal. So Devastal is our uh, second uh, observing site at Himalayas uh, in, in Mukteshwar. So ADIS uh, is currently proud to host uh, two major uh, observational uh, facilities, uh, particularly from optical. Uh, so namely, this is the 3.6 meter Devastal optical telescope at the same site at, at Mukteshwar. We also have a smaller telescope, 1.3 meter DFM telescope, which has been operational for more than a decade now. And now very recently, we got the first slide uh, from this uh, you know, international liquid mirror telescope of, of four meter diameter. So let me first under, uh, you know, tell you that the conventional telescopes are normally uh, built by reflectors in the form of either a mirror or a lens. So bigger the telescope, I know it is uh, more difficult to use the lenses. So most of the modern telescopes are built from mirrors. Uh, and these are glass mirrors with different coatings and so on. The advantage of these conventional telescopes also uh, is that, you know, you need to, you know, point out your telescope to any part of the sky. And uh, that uh, also allows you to track any object which you, uh, of your interest uh, as it moves uh, from one part of the sky to the other part of the sky. Whereas uh, in this liquid mirror telescope, Instead of glass uh, mirror, the idea is that uh, mercury, which is a very good uh, you know, liquid and very good reflector, it can be taken any shape uh, uh, when you deform it. So what we do is uh, we pour this uh, huge amount of mercury, about 50 kgs, in a bowl. And then if you start rotating this bowl with a certain uh, angular velocity, then the liquid will spread over. And the shape of the bowl, which is uh, normally a paraboloid, because these kind of uh, telescopes, the primary mirror, the reflecting surface, takes a shape of a parabola. And when the light from a distant object falls on this mirror, it gets reflected into a focal point. And in this uh, liquid mirror telescope, the disadvantage is that uh, we cannot rotate it uh, or we cannot turn it, so to say, uh, a different uh, part of the sky because uh, of this rotation speed, which has to be maintained. And there is also a question of gravity, you know, so balancing of this gravity and the rotation, what you import in this uh, bowl uh, gives you the shape of a mirror and it always looks at the zenith. So you have a, a sort of half a degree field in the uh, zenith. And any object, when it is crossing this uh, field of view, are captured by this telescope. So the advantage is that it is a big, pretty big, uh, you know, mirror, a four meter class at a much reduced cost as compared to a conventional, uh, you know, mirror, uh, glass mirror telescope. Almost it's a one tenth of the cost of a, you know, conventional telescope to this uh, liquid mirror telescope. So that's the sort of, you know, a quick comparison between a conventional glass telescope as compared to the liquid mirror telescope. 
Now your second question is how relevant is this and how important it can be for uh, research in, in, in the field of astronomy from India. Uh, as uh, you, I already mentioned that this is a pretty large size telescope, a four meter, you know, uh, conventional telescope, the largest so far from India uh, was 3.6 meter, which is also situated in Devastar. The other telescopes in India is mostly in the two meter class in other parts of the Himalayas or in, even a new telescope is coming by physical research laboratory, uh, you know, near Ahmedabad, uh, which is also a 2.5 meter telescope. So you can imagine a four meter telescope means, you know, it can look at the more distant object. So our quest for, you know, uh, fainter and for fainter and more distant uh, stars and galaxies are always there. So uh, very uh, weak sources you can capture with this five meter telescope. So it will have a element of, you know, discovering new objects, which is there in from our part of the, uh, you know, uh, globe uh, in our in this, you know, half a degree within this half a degree field of view. So it can detect any moving object for that matter. So it can be a galaxy, it can be a star, it can be an asteroid, it can be a space debris uh, or even a satellite. So, so we are observing all the time when, when this will be fully operational. And within this field of view, any object comes, we need to identify those objects. Now, the other big advantage of having these two big telescopes at the Devastar site is, suppose you, uh, you know, detect an object in the sky with this, this liquid mirror telescope, which has only capabilities of imaging. That means it can only image. It cannot do further analysis in terms of, you know, when we look at astronomical objects, we try to characterize its properties. What is its temperature? What is the kind of velocity with which it is moving? whether it has uh, you know, atmosphere around it. So for that, what you need is we need more instruments with uh, spectroscopic capabilities and so on. So the idea is now that you, you detect some object, which is so-called new, which you have not uh, known earlier. And immediately you point out your 3.6 meter telescope to that object with much more sophisticated backend instruments. And then you will be able to characterize the properties of this object. That uh, uh, apart from the conventional, is there uh, is there the time and operational feasibility that liquid mirror gives? It's just a layman person asking, as if we can simply uh, you know break it down. Because when a telescope is placed, it is, is it is placed and pointed towards one direction. But with liquid mirror telescope, will it be able to cover a wider uh, diaspora and wider uh, uh, range of uh, universe? We can say, and is that is that a bigger advantage? Uh, it's a very good question. So as I pointed out that we are not able to maneuver the telescope to wherever we like. We are always looking at the zenith. So the point, I mean, uh, it is looking at the open sky with a half a degree field of view. But your point is uh, nice that within that large field of view, uh, we have a possibility of, you know, uh, detecting more number of objects because it has a larger field, larger, you know, areas which we will cover. So these telescopes are also often called as a survey mode telescope that we are surveying the part of the sky. And what also happens is, you know, we can continuously look at subsequent days. So the same object may come back, you know, again and again to the same part of the sky at similar time. So that allows us to, you know, add on all these images following that images for a number of days and get a better data uh, about those objects. So this is somewhat related to what you mentioned that these kind of telescopes are very good for survey that, you know, you surveying a part of the sky and trying to detect new objects. Suppose, you know, there is a gamma ray burst, you know, these are, you know, uh, stages of a stellar uh, evolution where, um, you know, the stars can uh, explode or even sometimes, you know, it's a galaxy itself will have certain morphological changes and, and so on at the center of the galaxy. And then you want to detect that particular timing possibilities are better uh, from this liquid binet telescope. 
Yeah, exactly. That's what uh, I was looking for in because uh, when when we sir when we talk about the space phenomena, the universe, it's so huge. It's just not about searching for the planets, the galaxies, black holes, and space debris, supernova, uh, supernovas. There are like so many phenomena right now happening simultaneously in our universe while we are sitting here talking to each other. Um, how does it this is just a curiosity question that how does scientists decide what to choose what to survey and how this sifting process actually uh, takes place it's it's really a phenomenal thing to uh, just think even yeah that that's also very very interesting and and right question um so normally a scientist tries to focus on certain objects for his or her own research uh also the phd students will have a defined uh, problem uh, uh to look at during uh, his or her again phd tenure so you are absolutely right that someone is working on uh, say uh, you know stellar evolutions and these supernovas and when the supernova will explode and if the supernova explodes then prior to the explosion or after the explosion what are the characteristic properties of uh, these objects are so depending on the scientific interest of in individuals uh, they will use that part of the data so this is also very interesting from a liquid mirror telescope that that particular image is uh, going to have a number of things as you pointed out so all these images will be distributed to a number of uh, scientists and depending on my interest i will look at that particular object in fact uh, since you asked this question in fact um, you know so many different objects when you look at it as a single image uh, the movement of all these uh, objects are different and they are at a different distances so we are going to apply a lot of artificial intelligence and machine learning you know uh, techniques in the data pipeline to first characterize or identify these objects and once those objects are flat then this data will be distributed we will make this data available to the scientific community at large and depending on individual's interest uh, he or she can use the data for that particular subject where uh, you know our interest lie so Sorry. it has a huge potential in terms of serving many different you know individuals who has different you know uh, interests and subject areas sir um, as we have seen that liquid mirror is an international collaboration this telescope is a international collaboration uh, from belgium to poland to uzbekistan uh, to canada Uh, this has been whole set up and uh, operationalized finally uh, to be uh, to, to go on to the operationalized uh, um, uh, stage so can you uh, enlighten us how such international collaborations uh, in specifically science and astronomy would lead to furthering um, our our uh, strengthening our uh, research in astronomy this is a very very important point in general you know science is becoming global we cannot do science being in isolation now you know in earlier days people used to uh, work in their own uh, you know small little uh, office and used to do calculations and then the publish and all that but particularly for in the field of uh, observational astronomy it is very important that we have a, a wide variety of interactions within the country and beyond so the international collaboration uh, is so much important these days because these objects there are two elements actually one is that you need to uh, study uh, in the multi wavelength multi wavelength means you know only the optical light or the radio wavelengths we can detect from the ground you need to go to higher up mountains to see a little bit of infrared but if you want to see the emission when x rays and uh, and ultraviolet and so on then you need to go to the space platform so combination of space programs and ground based programs are in, important and space programs globally you know uh, particularly nasa isa and jaxa the japanese uh, space agencies have really uh, evolved over the years so we need to participate in those programs as well the in terms of the liquid mirror telescope it's actually a, a very good example of a again a quality international collaboration Uh, professor paul hickson you uh, know uh, he has been involved with this liquid mirror telescope with nasa very very actively 
uh, there have been six meter telescope also but as you also mentioned those telescopes were not dedicated for astronomical purposes so this is the first liquid mirror telescope which is dedicated for astronomical observation so i was referring to uh, uh, professor john sudej from university of liege in belgium he has been also instrumental in this uh, particular project in fact a uh, lot of things have been driven from uh, from belgium and the telescope the hardcore uh, you know part of it is uh, you know designed and uh, manufactured uh, at amos in liege again it is a belgian company who were uh, responsible for the 3.6 meter devasel optical telescope also so we have two telescope uh, at devasel uh, currently which are the largest telescope in india were built in belgium so this is again a very good uh, you know example of uh, international uh, collaborations uh, how we can uh, you know achieve this uh, world class you know facilities uh, having said that you know um, we are catching up with this um, this uh, technological advancement because we still do not have such precision instrument building facility within the country even within the industry so that's why we are still dependent somewhat on the international uh, uh, you know uh, scenario but uh, we hope you know one once, once we start using these facilities we have to maintain it that means the day to day lot of operations lot of upgradations you know uh, are required to be done at our our side and we are actively participating in that in that way we are actually getting gaining much more knowledge about the sophisticated instruments so hopefully with this you know uh, advanced knowledge uh, sometime in near future we'll be able to build this with industry partnership as well so this is something which we are also keeping aside as a, as a part of the you know um, advantage or fruit to be uh, uh, taken out of international collaborations since ancient times india has been at the forefront of science and technology with time we are advancing towards achieving self reliance goals in the scientific spirit here what professor banerjee has to say on that it's a very good question and a very important uh, one as well that at the end of the day we uh, if we want to you know sort of really migrate from a developing nation to a developed nation we need to be uh, self reliant uh, so this atmanirbhar bharat uh, step which is uh, been uh, you know really highlighted by uh, government now we are all very supportive of that but sometimes what happens you know there is a uh, there is a transition period there is a time required to catch up with the technology which is there in the western world some of these sophisticated um, you know uh, instruments uh, they have a certain precision which they have achieved with uh, sort of you know uh, with their technological advancements over several decades and frankly i i mean my opinion that we have to catch up with that because in our industry still uh, we are making lot of uh, productions but in terms of precision instruments uh, you know which demands uh, this you know international quality uh, you know observations and so on uh, we still haven't uh, reached there so i would say that it is good to have such inter- uh, such collaboration which allows us to participate and really appreciate what kind of you know really um, you know precision which we need so this is what i was trying to indicate that now uh, while using this and maintaining it and regularly you know even troubleshooting these instruments we are getting into the hardcore of these uh, you know instrument development we are also you know collaborating with these people to troubleshoot in fact this last year and a half has been quite uh, in a way uh, you know a lot of new learning has come because we have managed it you see none of these people have visited last two years but our telescopes are operational completely whenever there is some troubleshooting to be required we call them and then remotely we take uh, you know a lot of their uh, advices but we execute it now so through this process we are learning how to uh, you know get into that kind of precision uh, instrumentation but we need to work with our industry now and uh, see how best we can you know uh, involve them into this precision making instrumentation 
So it is required and uh, we are in the first uh, stage of that, I would say. Sir, uh, Aries not only is responsible for giving us the best of te- telescopes uh, of the country, but also is responsible for educating uh, the youth aspiring youth by giving the programs, the training programs required. So how do you see the participation of youth right now in astronomy uh, when it comes to the research sector of astronomy? Yeah, it's a very good question. And actually, this should be our one of the major trust that how to generate the next generation. The HR exercise uh, is we are taking it uh, very, very seriously now. We have a very active, uh, you know, PhD program. I mean, we have we are only 22 uh, scientists here, but we have about 55 PhD students. And we also take a lot of intern students, uh, project students. Right now, there are about 30 odd you know, uh, project students from different parts of the India. Uh, uh, they are visiting us. They stay here for over a month and uh, do uh, projects with our scientists and engineers as well. We have also initiated the MTech PhD program with the Calcutta University, uh, where you know the engineering students can come into you know astronomy. What we now realize that uh, amongst the youngsters, uh, there are a lot of interest in astronomy actually. Uh, uh, it fascinates uh, uh, you know people, and we have to you know find out ways to accommodate more uh, students uh, at different levels. You know, starting from undergraduate to postgraduate to uh, research level, and we are uh, we are into that. But we have to you know enhance our um, uh, our you know infrastructural facilities. We are doing that. Government is quite supportive in this. We are building new hostels. We are building you know uh, other centers where you know we are building uh, science centers uh, training centers so these are some of the elements which at aries i am taking it uh, uh, with the highest priority and as you mentioned after all we are uh, you know using taxpayers money to uh, to you know do our research so it's our obligation to uh, to uh, do the to the community at large that you know how to motivate the youngsters particularly and also the public so we do have you know public viewing exercises we have our smaller telescopes which are dedicated for uh, you know public outreach activities we conduct a lot of schools and uh, workshops uh, at at ads to uh, accommodate uh, students from uh, different colleges and universities uh, and apart from that there are day visits possible from neighboring schools and colleges uh, and we conduct, you know, short term, you know, training, uh, you know, sessions as well for them. So that's that these are the elements which we are taking it quite seriously. And it's very, very important to take things forward. Well, that's all for today's segment. Thank you for watching.